Hello, good evening and welcome to our open forum for people who are considering studying homeopathy with ourselves. My name is Som Jandu. I'm one of the directors at the College of Practical Homeopathy. And the other person you can see on your screen is Ellen Kramer, founder. Good evening, Ellen. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for putting up with my school talk, Perfect. which I'm obviously not good at. So <laughs> let's continue. Thank you for attending, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome wherever you are in the world. We're going to go through a few slides to introduce what we do. And then over to you, ladies and gentlemen, to ask us any questions you wish. So we're a college. This was founded by Ellen about 20 years ago. She also founded another college prior to that. And she had this mission in mind. She wanted to become the global leader in practical homeopathic education. Practical is very important to us, as we'll see later on. And that means being hands-on and seeing actual patients, as opposed to being a theoretical homeopath, knowing all the remedies. We also wanted to make learning practical homeopathy efficient and affordable. Efficient that you can study it when you want and where you want it, and affordable that it isn't prohibitive to your lifestyle and you have ways to pay for it. You can pay in installments as well. So if you're really keen, you'll find a way to make it work for you. What is our vision? We want to have homeopaths like us in every country in the world to help you heal patients as they need alternatives to drugs. What are our values? We share our learnings as we learn to keep homeopathy progressing. Even during the COVID pandemic, we were at the forefront of managing that pandemic, helping people, one, not to get COVID, two, if they had COVID, how to heal quicker and prevent it happening again, for an example. And as we learned with things that life throws at us, we share it in real time with our students. You don't have to buy a book which is old. You learn it as we go. And if you want to learn more about that, we'll tell you about the methods in which we involve you and engage you so you continue to learn with us even if you're a student, or even after you have graduated with us. Who are we, and why are you even considering us? Over time, we've become the leading institute for training professionals all around the world. Some of you may not want to have your own practice, but just to treat your family and friends. But you can rest assured that you'll have the same professional level qualification and education as people who hold their own clinics. So it's not a hobby homeopathy, it's not home homeopathy, for part-time people, you learn it to the highest standards so that you can treat people to your best ability. And you can read the first time, we're the first in the world to provide this online when the internet generation, the internet wave hit us. We're the first UK college to be recognized and accredited across many continents, as you can read there. And we're the only homeopathic school to be accredited by the prestigious British Accreditation Council. That's an independent body that governs colleges of any kind of education, which are not universities, for standards of excellence. And we're the only college that has held that for about 17 years. We're also the first to be validated under the Homeopathic Course Providers Forum Quality Assurance and Validation Scheme. So you can rest assured that everything you're getting is the best by peer reviews, independent organizations, and other homeopaths that rate this college. As people tell us, we're the industry's best kept secret. And it's our challenge to make sure we're not a secret anymore. We're also the first to offer year-round courses. So you study at a time that suits you and your families. There is no term time, no intake. So if it suits you, when it suits you, you enroll and you study at your pace with our support. And the, the, the big thing for me when I started here as well, we're the first to teach holistic homeopathy. We'll show you about that later, where you learn so much more than just homeopathy. You can read it there, herbs, nutrition, supplementation, what in some people in some countries call actual natural medicine. So it's a fully fledged, fully integrated course that we teach. And over the years, our global presence has been increasing. So much so that we've had over 4,000 students graduate, over 50,000 patients treated, and we've had over 150 webinars. So people do like us here, and we hope you like us enough to become a valued member of our student fraternity. We have two courses, the professional training for people who are not qualified as healthcare professionals who wish to study homeopathy and don't have a medical degree or a sciences background. And we have the postgraduate course for existing healthcare professionals and complementary medicine practitioners. And you can see the split there, but that changes over time as people come and join us. 
And we offer two courses. The one on the left is a professional training course. It's a degree level course held over three levels and has 30 modules, 10 modules per level, certificate, diploma, and your fully fledged license. The other course is the postgraduate course and is at a master's degree level. And it has 12 modules for existing health professionals or complementary. You can see the benefits of the courses down below. Every one of our students has a dedicated tutor that works with you and guides you through your entire journey until you qualify. There are no exams. It's a practical course, so everything you're doing is case-based with real patients and real case studies. We support that with student clinics, of which we have many, on a bi-weekly basis on Zoom and weekly basis and monthly basis in London and now internationally. I myself will be over in Texas on Wednesday holding a weekend of homeopathic teaching. And we're going to increase that globally as time goes by. We have webinars, audios, podcasts, and videos to further enhance your learning to make it a true integrated and immersive experience. And all of our tutors here are homegrown, qualified, biased, so they do the exact same course that the students are learning. Who better to teach it than people who have actually passed the course rather than external speakers? Here at the college, we don't tell you if we're great. We help you become great homeopaths. Our course content covers these subjects and many, many more, of which homeopathy on the top left is the cornerstone of which everything is built but it's supplemented and enhanced by all the other subjects that you can see in front of you. How do we do this? We're practical. As you see at the bottom here, it says you practice by doing. Only by getting hands-on will you actually apply the homeopathy you learn, the nuances, what works, what doesn't. When multiple different diseases present and you don't know where to start, you learn by doing, not just by reading and listening. What makes us unique? Our approach to homeopathy, we focus on case analysis, not just trying to find the remedy that does the job for now, but to understand how the patient got to where they are. How did they come from being well to being unwell? What was the journey? What were the factors? When you understand that that's clear, we then teach you to find the right tools to help you find the right remedy. That way you don't chase a remedy. Sometimes we hear people saying, oh, I've tried everything. We haven't tried everything. There are four or 5,000 remedies. But we get frustrated. But if we have a structured approach, which gives us multiple methods to approach a patient from any which way they present, we feel empowered, we feel confident, and we feel competent. And then our patients have encouragement and confidence in us. That's the way we teach you. Why? Because it makes you adaptable to any situation that you will encounter now, or in the future, such as COVID three years ago. This enables you to become an independent, free thinker. Open your mind. Don't be constrained by protocols. Think yourself, learn what we teach you, and then progress it so homeopathy keeps progressing for the future. Ellen's vision has always been to create homeopaths for the 21st century, not the 17th century. One of the things we talk about here is cause, effects, and obstacles to cure. The patient comes to us with their symptoms. The symptoms are the signs of the body. They talk to us. Disease is the dialogue of the body. It talks to us. We have to determine with the three T's of disease. Is the patient presenting due to trauma, due to toxicity, or a thought? And we teach various methods to unravel that and, and get to that cause when you can. Sometimes you can't always get to the cause, so we offer guidance there. And if some of you have bought or are thinking of buying Ellen's book, it's an excellent little start into homeopathy, whether you study or not. So do buy the book. It's relatively affordable, and it will guide you better than any college will anyway. And in that book, you'll have this table, this flow chart, which will guide you to treat people, friends and family, or patients. But once you go through this flow chart, you need the method to empower you. And if you look on the left, there are 10 different methods that will help you treat the parts of the patient that are damaged or treat the patient in parts. On the other side, you've got whole patient methods that teach the patient as an entire human. And we tell you the conditions, criteria, and the relevance and when and how to use each method. This differs from people who are called classical homeopaths because they really only have one method and one remedy at a time. If you need multiple approaches, you'll be stifled. 
And as I said earlier, we need to free your thinking and empower you. Use the tools at your disposal. That's what you learn with us here. That's me for now. I'm going to open the floor for questions and answers. So please use the chat or unblock your mic, introduce yourself and ask us what you wish. Thank you for listening to me for the last few moments. Alan, any words from you before we open the panel for questions? You need to unmute your mic, Alan. That's a good example for all of us. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is, is welcome everyone and just say a little bit about the course and why I developed it in this way. When I was training, what I could see was that We were taking, when I was running another college, we were actually not bringing the lowest dom uh, common denominator up to the highest. And I could see there were gaps. So the people weren't quite understanding how to observe and deal with patients. So we were taking the highest common denominator, that's the best students and bringing them down to the lowest which is what modern education does it brings people down to you know to the lowest common denominator as opposed to taking people up to the highest standards and so my mission was to bring people up to the highest standards so everybody would understand how to analyze a case because i realized that without case analysis you are guessing you're not understanding what the patient is telling you. The symptoms are really the conversation and we give you tools to understand that conversation. And we do use the Chinese five elements as part of our, our guidance and our observational skills. So we show you a lot of, of skills to observe so that eventually the more you do this, a patient can open their mouths and in 10 minutes, You've worked out exactly what their body is telling you. You can see and understand where you need to you need to work. That takes a bit of time, but you know it took me about seven years of practice to get to the same place as my certificate level students. You know when they when they get to the end of the level. <coughs> so that's really what I want to say. It's an amazing journey. You will never look at people and disease and health in the same way. And I'm open to all sorts of questions from you. From you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, please ask us some questions. We're sitting, listening, ready to speak with you. Maybe someone's done such a good job that there are no questions and we can all go home. I hope so. Please ask about the course, the duration, you know, um, oh, ask sorry. Hey. <laughs> hey. hello. Well, we had somebody, Elvira. was it Elvira? Yeah, well, I don't want to, I don't want to butt in, but I do no, want to thank you. you. I, I want to thank you very much for, for doing this webinar. I've heard many, many, um, great reviews from present students that are in your, um, college right now who are very happy with what they're learning and. They're telling us that um, it's really filling in the gaps of their learning. And I'm very happy and excited to um, hear about that. And I'm looking forward to becoming a student as well. Um, I have a very simple question. Um, I just wonder, what would you say your success rate is in this in your methods of prescribing? <laughs> um, good question, Vera. Before I answer, I'm not, I'm not stalling you because I might ask, do you want Ellen or myself to answer? If you want anyone in particular to answer, do. But would you mind telling us which country, in, and if you're in America, which it sounds as you are, which state you're from, so we can identify I, and connect with you a bit better? Oh, yeah. I'm um, I'm from Canada. I'm in Ontario, near Toronto. Okay. All right. Nice. Well, welcome. Thank you. So you're five hours behind, roughly. Thank you. Yeah. We have many students in um, Canada as well, both on the, on the East and West Coast in BC. Thank you for that. Ellen, do you want to answer that? Or do you want me to? Well, you know, it, once you... Um, learn to analyze your case, you know, you should actually, as a practitioner, get a 99% um, success rate. 
uh, when you come to the student clinics, the Zoom clinics, when you see what the students achieve in the clinics with our guidance, it's it's phenomenal. Some patients take longer to get to their destination of good health. Other people, when they get when their symptoms disappear, they don't continue, even though you know that they should continue, because you can see there's a lot of work they need to do. But for the average um, patient, they're just happy that their symptoms have gone. So in the student clinic, because it's a low cost clinic, I have the pleasure of watching patients transform into completely different people from when they when they came. In my own practice, I find I've got patients that I've had for over 20 years. I see them now and again when they have, you know, crises in their lives. Uh, but for the majority of people, within four appointments, they've got what they want. Okay, so with and that's why when we do our graduation cases, students present um, four appointments in their graduation cases because by the fourth appointment, you've more or less got the patient back on back on track, and it's at that point that a lot of patients decide that actually, you've done the job, and they and they're happy. But when they come to the low cost clinic, it's really great to watch people investing in their health. A lot of people don't want to invest in their health, but because of the finances, but at the student clinic, they can invest in their health. Um, and we have at the Zoom clinic, you know, the, um, the online clinic, we have students who started the certificate level. They're in the, first, the, the fifth module and they're happy to present cases. And all the students and the graduates that join are there to support you, to give you input and to guide you because there's only one way to learn homeopathy. And that is through experiencing what you're doing and how you're applying it. The experience of watching patients get better because we're showing you the mod, you know, the, the different methodologies and the case analysis, by the time you leave as a, a graduate, you should be able to do this um, with your eyes closed. And you should have me and some in your head saying, what's the cause? What are the obstacles? You know, what's going on in the case? Look at the timeline, look at the repetition of the same emotional issue that the patient has been trying to suppress because they had a trauma at the age of five. Uh, and the consequences of suppression and chronic toxicity. So no, I'm, I'm very confident. If you know how to case analysis, it doesn't matter what, what where, where you're at, who you see, whether they're cancer. Yeah, there are some cancer patients, the best you can do for them because they see you so late is support them to actually exit exit this world in the best way possible. So I hope Thank that answers your question, Elvira. Yeah, very, very, very nice. Thank you. Can I add a few little comments to that, if I may? Um, however, the other thing we also say is that's a very good question. Success rate, it depends how you determine success. Now, when sometimes we also teach up um, students, ask your patient, what is what does good health look like you? Because for some people, it doesn't mean jumping around like they were 20. Sometimes there's some, somebody with a broken level of cancer says success means living another day, living another month. Somebody who has joint pain, success to them means I just don't want an operation. The other day I was talking to my partner and she said that one of her friends has, has got fibroids, right? So she has to go for an operation. Success may be that I don't need the operation. So one is what you ask your patient, what does healthful what is your outcome for your health? What is your vision for your health? Something else can be, please don't put yourself under pressure to heal your patient in one consultation or in one month. Sometimes patients have had conditions for 10, 20, 30 years or a lifetime or many, many months. So you're not obligated to heal them in your first consultation. Take that pressure away from you. I'm talking to all of you here. Second, you have to educate your patient that it took a long time for you to get from wellness to illness. It's going to take time for you to get well again this is why we call them patients and not clients because you need patients so a couple of little things like this to help us 
get, a, get an understanding of working with a patient towards a picture of health that means something for them. So that's another way to define success. And I'll quote you something Ellen taught me when I was studying here. She said, if it takes nine months to create a perfect human in a perfect environment, the womb, how long do you think it takes to heal an imperfect human in an imperfect environment? So give time, time, you need patience. And success also means going on that journey using different methods and different remedies. Sometimes your patients will say, the remedy stopped working. <laughs> the remedies don't stop working. We stop needing them. Then we move on to a different condition. Then we need another approach. And that's what we do here. We empower our students to take the approach that's relevant to get their patient from A to B to C to D, right the way to Z or Z. On that journey, you work with them through health for what they need. So success means longevity, well-being, or sometimes in the worst cases, dying with dignity. And we have a whole module about end-of-life care in our course, which many, many other courses, or hardly any, cover that aspect. One is difficult to cover. Second, it's almost impossible to treat. But when you can help someone pass on from this life with peace, with dignity, without tubes, that can be successful. So it's how we define it as well. I hope that rounds out your question there for you, Elvira. Yes, thank you. Pleasure. Has anybody else got another question for us, please? I have a question. Hello, who's this? This is Katie and I'm in um, the States, I'm in Ohio. Hey Katie, thank you for speaking with us and welcome. Um, thank you for doing this, this is fabulous. I'm, with the, I'm actually a student with Elvira, so I know her very well. Oh, I have a question kind of more pragmatically, what is the cost and how do you do installments? And then another question is, what are the requirements for your graduation? I heard um, Ellen was talking about doing, um, presenting for actual, sounds like cases for your graduation. And do you have anything else for the graduation requirement? Ellen, would you like to cover the graduation criteria? I'll yeah. cover the cost and courses. Okay. In order to graduate, you have to present three of your own cases with four appointments. And on top of that, we encourage you, well, you have to present your own materia medica and your own therapeutics. Those two books are actually your books. So you do them in a way that suits you and works for you, okay? Because they're your books that you're going to use in practice. When you're on the Zoom clinics or listening to some of the audios and webinars, there are things in there that people are going to say about a remedy, a condition. That's the information that you want to put into your own therapeutics book. So if you're doing the a, a course, um, I've got the name of, of a your practical training, the Banerjee protocols, to ask the protocols of therapeutic um, recommendations that for particular diseases. What you will learn is to work with your own patients and develop your own protocols. And that should go into your own, I'm going to call it protocol book, but to us it's a therapeutics book. There will be things that I will talk about or Song or any of the other tutors who do the Zoom clinics about remedies that you're not going to find in the Materia Medica. So we encourage you to put that information in your own Materia Medica book. Once you join us and you've done module two, you'll be welcome to our Ohana group. Uh, and in Ohana, the students and the teachers and the graduates give you so much information that all of that should go straight into your therapeutics, your therapeutic oh. book. Okay. So those are the three things you have to present when you when you graduate from CPH. No exams. Oh. Thanks, Ellen. Can I thank you for that, Ellen? Um yeah, so, so to graduate, all through the course, you will do case after case after case after case. Our job is to empower you to take your cases from very early on in your studies. Many colleges require you to almost graduate before you're even allowed to speak to somebody. Not here. We encourage it because otherwise, how, are you else, how else are you going to learn? Right. 
So that's the criteria to graduate. Let me cover a bit about the cost. And we'll talk about the Banerjee protocols, Ellen, because we've had somebody on the, um, the Q&A on the chat I was reading. So that will be an overlap here. So the course, what are the course fees? They're in the information pack, which you can obtain. You have it down below here. On the screen, you see right at the bottom, you'll see the email for admin at the cph.co.uk. Contact them. Or if you wish, contact me directly, write to me direct. It'll be my pleasure to answer you on a one-to-one -one basis, okay? And you can write me and uh, email me and I'll respond back. The course fees currently at the moment, the postgrad course are between five to six thousand pounds. Convert that to whatever currency you wish, depending on if you pay in front, up front, you get a discounted rate. Otherwise, you pay the standard fee with you pay in installments. And for the professional training course for non qualified health, healthcare professionals, it's up between four to five thousand pounds. Okay, so that's that. And the course has a duration. If, however, you don't get to complete the course within that duration, we allow you to continue until you do by paying an extension fee beyond. So the cost can vary depending on your speed of learning. The quicker you are, the cheaper it is. However, because we encourage you to start taking patients as soon as you can, as soon as you're confident with the guidance and direction of us and your tutor, you can actually start charging people a part qualified fee. Hmm. So you can earn as you learn and that can help to subsidize your studies. It's quite an innovative way of doing it. But that also helps you build up your business and your practice and get a reputation. And as Alvaro asked earlier, increase your success rate. You want to do that before you qualify rather than spending a couple of years to invest your money and have no one even know about you. So your re reputation should exceed your success before you qualify. Hopefully that answers that. Somebody mm -hmm. answered the notes. I've studied the Banerjee protocols. Which course should I do? It depends. As Alan just said, Banerjee protocol doesn't teach you how to be a homeopath. It doesn't teach you how to take a case. But what it does teach you is, if you have this condition, I have some remedies that I can try for you based on the hundreds and thousands of numbers and patients they've used. That's fine. And there's a somerson for you. Therapeutics has a place when you can't take a case. Because somebody comes to you with a cold, yes, here's something for a cold. But why do you get a cold every week, every month? I need to get beyond that to, under, to understand the cause. And the protocols don't teach you that. And I'll give you an example how I understand it. If I'm learning to cook, and I have a recipe, I can't make food without the ingredients. So the recipe is a set of instructions. The ingredients is how we support the body. But if all I do is follow recipes, I'm not a cook, really. I should be able to look at ingredients and make it up myself. And this is what Ellen said. We empower you to make your own protocols, depending on the patient who comes. You need this for this reasons. You need this for this reasons. So the way we teach you is choose a remedy within the context of the case you're seeing. People come to us and say, oh, I use Napmur, it's my favorite remedy. Nux Vomica is my go-to. There shouldn't be a go-to because the answer should be, it depends. What do you need it for? What is the cause? What potency do you need? So we talk a different language, even though the remedies we use are 300 years old. How we talk and how we think manifests in how we act. And that, ladies and gentlemen, manifests in how successful we are and how great health our patients experience. Hopefully that answers that two or three questions in one. So what I'd like to, to add um, to this is in terms of making having your own protocols, you see, once you start seeing a lot of cases, you will see patterns of mental, emotional issues that come up with particular symptoms. Okay, so as you're analysing the cases and you're getting more experiences, in in case analysis, then it goes beyond just you know finding a strategy for your patient. You then begin to see that oh, you know underlying thyroid problem, there usually is a trauma around grief. So you you start to see those patterns once you learn to analyze and observe human beings. You know this is. A people's business and you need you're not here to fix people because they're the only ones that can heal themselves you're here to guide them towards health because that's what they've come to see you about mm. i hope that's added to song's mm -hmm. answer okay anybody else for another question or to build on this conversation katie did i answer the question for you 
Yes, it did. It just brought one other question up when you're talking about, you mentioned the Chinese five elements and then the aspect of the health. Yep. Do you prescribe then supplements? Or are you going okay. with? Good question. Sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll answer. No, that's kind of the question. So yeah, go ahead. Okay, right. Let me go back to this info pick here, right? Um, this. Now, homeopathy is the top left here. We teach the Chinese five elements and basics of the five elements so we understand how to use the body as an observational tool. Mm -hmm. How the body manifests illnesses in body parts and body systems, but how it's linked to the emotional, as above, so below. We also teach the chakra system, the Indian Ayurvedic system. So mm -hmm. when you have two of the oldest medical systems in the world and you combine it with the most natural medicine system in the world, homeopathy, these are all healing arts. Then you add to it, as you see, flower essences, tissue salts, herbs. People who do our courses do not go on to do another course in any other subject. They can read that course further by reading books because they're already qualified, so they don't need another qualification. And the ability to be able to pull all these healing arts and methods of healing, meditative proving, bowel nonsense, to add and supplement. So do we prescribe them? Yes, we can. So the way we ask you here is analyze the case, Decide your homeopathic remedies based on the method you've chosen and then support the patient with anything else they might need. And let mm. me qualify that for you. My background is in pharmacological medicine, the pharma industry. If I take a drug, that's changing me physically, physically, chemically, physiologically, right? But if I add a herb to that, it may interact with what I'm taking. It doesn't mean the herb's bad. It means the drug's bad because it's messed up my liver, my kidneys, and my systems. So the herb doesn't work as effectively. Not the way pharma teachers don't take herbs. Herbs have been around since the earth has been here. But because the herb acts as a chemical, it goes through the stomach, is digested through first pass metabolism, and is metabolized, ingested, digested, and assimilated, just like a drug, there's a potential for interaction. When you give a homeopathic remedy, because it's an energetic frequency, it doesn't interact. It's not even administered the same way. So it bypasses it. So for us, homeopathy sits at the top of the tree. But where a patient isn't taking drugs, you can adequately support the body easily with herbs and top it off with homeopathy. And we teach you this holistic, integrated approach where you can pull the resources you need depending on what the body and the and the individual patient needs. Not everybody needs it. Not everybody needs homeopathy either. But you be the, the you decide that. But if you're here to study homeopathy, we will teach you how to apply it in a way which no other college does. And if you ladies are from Ohio and from Canada, we have people from the CCCH in Canada become our students on the postgrad course. And they're like, wow, we weren't even taught any of this. We have people in America who say we haven't covered this, just a protocol. So this is proper homeopathy building up from first principles, but to a level of complexity where you can talk to another homeopath and they think, oh my gosh, we don't, we don't feel qualified enough to speak to you. <laughs> At the same time, you can speak to physicians and you can say, I can do what you do, but you can't do what I do. Because I understand the body the way you do. I understand the allopathic approach, which we teach in the course. But I also know the homeopathic approach, which they do not know. Let me give you another comment on that, because we get it a lot. People say, my doctor says not to use this. Well, your doctor is not qualified in my system of medicine. So he's unqualified to comment on my system of medicine. Hmm. I don't come and talk to tell my plumber how to fix my toilet because I'm not qualified. So people say, well, my doctor says, well, he's not qualified. He's not had the training. So how can he speak? So when you add that, it's a different independent system of medicine before drugs. And then if people say, well, I'm not sure. Well, you ask them, say, what did your grandparents who are over 70, 80 years of age before drugs were invented? Did everybody drop dead and when they were ill? They didn't because they're over 80, 90 years old. So they survived. How did they survive? By natural organic foods and eating the herbs. Isn't that interesting? Mm. So that gives you that balance of the world we're going to be in. But as we've seen the world shift over three years, more and more people are less and less inclined to use drugs. Why? Because they're waking up to the side effect and the damage of drugs. Mm. So we're in a very good place to become professionally qualified because the world is waiting for practical homeopaths. Mm. I have one more thing to say, actually, on our course. We had Harvest Festival here in the UK. In the US, we're going to have Thanksgiving. I think it's around November the 23rd. So in the spirit of giving thanks, if you guys listening wish to enroll before November the 23rd, we're going to give you a 10% discount on the course fee. So if you're really keen, sign up and lock that in. That's our way of giving thanks for the abundance we've had as a college. But that will expire on the Thanksgiving day. 
So quote me on it, email me on it. We will honor that for you. If that encourages you to enroll and sign in, learn this wonderful system of medicine that we teach. Okay. So, um, hi, um, I had a question. Thank you, Ellen and, and Som for doing this. Um, this has been really helpful. I am um, originally from India, but I live in um, Florida. I've been living here for um, quite a few years. <laughs> What's uh, your name? Sorry? Rachna. Hi, Rachna. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so I had a couple of quick questions. Um, actually, just going back to your last comment about enrolling before November 23rd, I'm very interested, but I'm currently already enrolled in a program which doesn't end until mid-December. Um, so okay. does my timeline, I'm just, you know, I need a little break after that, maybe just a month or so. And then, um, so if I enroll now in, uh, you know, before November and I started like maybe in Jan or February of next year, uh, will that work or does does my time start as soon as I... Oh, okay, okay. Rachna, let me answer that for you and for the ladies and gentlemen on this course. And you can quote me because it's been recorded. If you want to enroll and pay your fee before the 23rd of November and then say have a start date for the new year, we will honor that, but we'll have it in writing for you. But don't leave it too long though either, okay? okay so you great. can lock in that price and enroll a month or two later, not a problem. Okay, that's perfect. But I had another question too. That was just <laughs> because you had mentioned that. Um, so how many hours of um, clinics do we have per month? Um and um, I know that we each get assigned a tutor and we, you know, we meet with them, I guess, once a month or something. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of the clinics, um, how often are those? And then, um, you know, with the course, are there recorded videos? Do they come with handouts? Like, how exactly is that laid out? Helen, do you want to talk, answer that or do you want me to? Uh, you can, you can uh, go on some and I'll just make comments. Okay, right. Well. I'll answer that very succinctly for you because I know we're keeping you guys a while. Okay. The course, to learn the course, somebody else has asked this, right? Allow for a module per month. That's allowed between 10, 20 or 30 hours a month, two or three hours a week. It depends how quick a learner you are. So there's a fixed time. You go at your own pace. We factored in time for every course and every module anyway because sometimes people learn quickly, some people learn slowly, sometimes life happens. If we have partners, if we have families or children, life gets in the way, birth, death, etc. Okay, so that's all factored in the course for you. The supporting materials, we hold a monthly clinic in London, live. I'm doing a clinic in Galveston in Texas this weekend. So if anyone's around in the US and get to Texas, I'll see you Sunday. Contact <laughs> me, mommy, I'll see you there. Bring your friends. So we're going to do more and more of these clinics. The Zoom clinic is held bi-weekly, every two weeks. And that's recorded for our students. It's private. It's nobody else gets it but our students. And that's on a private link to them. So there's a continuous influx of learning. We have a global WhatsApp and Signal group where our students, teachers, graduates talk to one another and there's learning every day. So it's very hands-on. It's very immersive, very supportive. And because of the distance, though, you can be as involved or as detached as you wish. Some people like to get on WhatsApp all day long and text their issues and learn. Some people dip into it now and again. But we make the platform available for you to learn at your pace, and you make the course your experience. And as I say, don't just go through the course, grow through the course and make it a personal learning experience. The course, the course is written in such a comprehensive manner. We've done it that way to minimize your need for external textbooks and things. You need a map med and a repertory, Murphy's, Ellen's book, which is a very thin book. You can read it in a day. And that's it. And then the course. The course isn't notes. It's proper written books. Every module could technically be a book. And many of our students print it out and put it in binders and folders, and they store it at home, like an MBA or a degree level course, because we expect you to dip into it often. And every time you dip into it, you will learn something that you perhaps forgotten or didn't realize because you didn't need that information at the time. That's how comprehensive this course is, which is also why we have the accreditation we do, which is also why we're very selective in the students we want to enroll with us, because we want students who understand this way, apply it this way, to become the cream of the crop. We don't need hundreds of thousands of students. We want the select few who want to be master homeopaths and take it to a different level. Hopefully that answers your question, Rachna. Ellen, you can probably tap it, cop it, top it up with a few more comments. Yes. Uh, what I'd like to say is when I graduated, I wanted to be a master, a master homeopath. And the best way I knew of being a master homeopath is to write a course. 
And by writing the course, it guided me towards mastery. A side effect of this is that the course is available to you. If you follow the steps, you will work your way to being a master healer and homeopath. It's as simple as that. The, the, the lessons themselves are self-explanatory because I don't do complexity. I like things to be easy and accessible so that anybody can use it. And I know that uh, Tony, who took my modeled writings and formatted the course, would say to me, if he, he wasn't a homeopath, if I can't understand it, no one else will. So what are you trying to tell me? And I would burst into tears <laughs> and uh, he would eventually pull out of me what I was trying to tell people. And his the art, of, you know, from Tony was he was able to put it in material that is very, very easy for students to follow. And I think that's, to me, that's the most important thing about the training. Thank you. I appreciate that. But Rajna, does, Rajna, does that answer your question for you completely? Yes, it, it does. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. There's something on the Q&A which I'll address. Somebody just asked, um, I won't name people who asked the question. You can read it there. Do you require the use of a radionics machine? We don't require the use of it, but we teach our students how to use one should they desire. Why? Because you can be in some countries in the world where you can go into a homeopathic pharmacy and just get everything you need. Cuba comes to mind, you know, Greece comes to mind, apothecaries. Other places, you cannot obtain these things. So you need the facilities and the ability to make your own. So that's, if you wish to invest in a machine to make your own remedies and combinations, by all means, go ahead. We support that. We will teach that. If you don't, that's your call. There are plenty of suppliers that will make them for you. However, a machine will give you the freedom, flexibility, and spontaneity to make things there and then which means you don't have to have a whole pharmacy or a cabinet at home should your son or daughter or partner fall over and have an injury there and then. So it gives you that real-time ability to make the remedy. Sorry, someone was going to speak up then. Hello? No? Okay. So hopefully that answers the question about machines. The machines just make in energetic format what the succussion makes when we succuss. People get afraid of machines sometimes. So let me address that as well. It's just a frequency. You are all listening to Ellen and myself and able to see us by virtue of a frequency going in the air and hitting you on your mobile device or computer. If I pick up my phone, I'm able to see, speak to someone by virtue of a frequency. So the frequencies aren't anything to be afraid of. Some people have a fear. Do you protect me again? No, I don't. Okay, the world, everything in the universe is an energy and a frequency. So we deal with quantum energy in a way that even the theoretical physicist cannot understand. And if you're a student, I'll give you a great webinar on that and a one-to-one -one on it as to how and why this energy works, how like cures like. But you have to be a student to, to understand that, okay? You have to pay for that privilege. So these machines just speed up our way and rate of making remedies and combos so we have them to hand. Hopefully that answers that question. Any other questions about the course or us or the college? By anybody? Nope. We'll wait a minute or two if anyone wants to think or, t or type indeed. We have the chat form as well, ladies and gentlemen, if you wish to type on there and you don't wish to speak directly. I'll say something. Hey, Tammy, how are you? Well, you just said that everything is a frequency, even your phone, but your phone, some would argue, have negative frequencies coming out of them and that they're harmful. Okay. Everything in the universe is a frequency, positive and negative. You know, Correct. Radioactive material grows in the ground as well, plutonium, uranium, etc. When we eat plants that come from the earth, they have ways to combat radiation, which is why when we teach a type of detoxin called chelation therapy, we teach you to eat things such as chlorella, spirulina, moringa. Many of you have heard of these things because the plant world has its own ways to deal with nature's attacks as well as nature's defenses. So when our body's that way, it can fend off everything. Now, this we teach about this in our module two when we talk about germ theory. We're taught to fear we're under attack from COVID. No, we're not. 
we have an immune system. If it's weakened, someone sitting next to me can cough on me, I'll, I'll get ill. So when we have a fear mindset, we believe that we're a victim. We talk about victim, rescuer, and abuser in our modules as well. It's all about our mindset. If I change my mindset, my frequency comes down, I'm more susceptible to being invaded by illness or radiation or anything, in fact. Because that lowers my vibration. So even that's an energy. Stress weakens my immune system. I get ill more often. Now, if these microdoses of radiation are around us, the lady, the radiologist in a in a hospital can stand behind the screen. In a dentist, I get an x-ray, they can stand behind the screen. That's okay, but microdoses will not kill us. Prolonged exposure all the time to high doses will. But if that was the case, why isn't everybody dying from a microwave oven or the sun's rays? We're told that the sun's rays give us cancer. But guess what? I'm Indian. Ellen's black. People live south of the equator. We have people in hot countries like Florida and California and Australia. There might be. A I'm not talking about the sun. The sun is healthy. I'm talking oh, okay. about man-made EMFs, electromagnetic okay. fields that are not natural. Okay. I'll come to that in a minute. But what we understand is when we have a fear, it's the mindset I'm talking about first, okay? And there are gonna... plenty of people who don't have a fear mindset who get sick. Tommy, that's right. But then if they don't, if they get sick, we teach you how to find the cause, okay? So when we talk about EMF, we have remedies to protect against EMF, believe it or not, okay? That's very easy to deal with, and we deal with it very often. There are homeopathic suppliers that even supply EMF remedies also. So... If someone's fearful of that or says, well, I'm working in a server farm, I work at Google or somewhere where they have Wi-Fi service or radiation everywhere, there's ways to protect them. But if that was the case, I'd be interested to see what the stats were for people who work in these high Wi-Fi radiations and the 5G, whatever it is, they should be dropping like flies. So there's something inherent in us. What Hanuman will teach us is called the vital force. If it's strong, we're pretty much impervious to most things. Eventually, we're all going to die anyway. right? So, But if we have that, will be susceptible to attack. So that's a very individual journey we go on. However, we have people who work in these things who take EMF protection and are absolutely fine. So there are remedies to protect that as well. But as we teach here, it's more important to understand the mindset of the individual, not as the world as a whole. Our job isn't to change the world, it's the world is to change it one mind at a time with like-minded people. Homeopathy isn't for everybody either, which is why there are different healing arts. Like cures like, like teachers like. As I said, we want people who think this way. People don't. There are other courses for other people. Medics don't understand homeopathy. Not a problem. One of the first modules we teach about all the various healing arts, acupuncturists, aromatherapists, they all have their tools. So ours isn't to dispute is one better than the other or one way. But we're saying that if someone's worried about radiation, we can help them overcome that. We can help them protect that. It's quite easy for us to do. Hopefully that answers your question. But we teach it in a way to open us up to the globe as well, to use common sense, to use other examples from life, because life is our teacher. We're not the teachers, we're the practical application, applicants of what life teaches us. That's how we learn. Hopefully that answers your question. Anybody else for any other questions? We have another one in the Q&A at the bottom. Do you teach repertorization using the software? Yes, we teach it via software and manually, so you can learn it both ways. So all software does, it doesn't make you a better homeopath. It makes you a quicker homeopath because it totals up the scores for you. So it's a tool to thinking. You're the thinker, which is also why we don't teach people to memorize 200 remedies like a walking materia medica. It costs 100 bucks. I'm sure you're worth more than that. But what we teach you to do is think, which no book can do for us. Think analyze a case, select a method, then choose a rubrics. And when you do the rep work, the rep will do the work and throw out the key indicated remedies, which you then compare and differentiate and find the one most suited to your patient. So as Ellen will tell us, we don't match the patient to a remedy, which everybody else says, we match the remedy to the patient to make it specific, individualized medicine. So yes, we do teach repping and repping is at the cornerstone of a, the way we teach here. We don't do, oh, you look like a next vomica. You sound like a nap mule. No, no, we don't do that. Because that's one rubric, one thing we're doing. We need to get the context of the case. And we don't say you are this. We say you're doing nap mule. If I'm sitting there crying and I need a cuddle, I'm doing pulsatilla. And if I'm doing it, I'm responsible for my actions. And then I can also undo it. 
that gives me as a patient empowerment and ownership over my condition. Then I'm not afraid, nor am I a victim. So when Thomas Mann tells me I've got a condition or a disease, I'm not, I'm a human being. I'm not a label that I walk around with. And if I've got it, I can unget it. So we work in a very empowering, liberating way to apply our homeopathy. I hope that answers that more fully. Any other questions? There's another one on there. Thank you. You're most welcome. Any other questions from anybody else? Any closing comments? Ellen, any remarks from you before we end this and thank everybody? I think, you know, one of the most important things to understand about human beings is their susceptibility. And it doesn't matter what the poison or the toxin is. Um, once you understand what's going on and why they're susceptible to diseases and where those diseases come from, there are tools and remedies. And just going back to electromagnetic radiation, there are things, quite a lot of things that people do to can and can do to protect themselves. And there are a lot of remedies to take people out of that susceptibility. And I feel that that's very, very important because we need to move from a mindset of victim into victor. And one of the first videos we ask our um, students to watch is Bruce Lipton's um, Biology of Belief. Biology of Belief. Yeah. And Cellular Signaling. And what I've learned over the years when I do cases and I'm looking at timelines, I see that the lesson is repeated until the lesson is learned. The mind is very, very powerful. And if you can guide people in terms of healing the trauma that set them off in a particular mindset from victim to victor, you freed them. And I think that that's, to me, that's very, very important. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to be here. And um, if you're enjoying your day, we're about to close down for the night. But, but to those who, whose days have started, I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. Yes, thank you, Ellen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for attending today. We really value the questions you ask us, even if they're challenging, it's good to ask that because it gets us clarity, you know? So never be afraid to challenge the status quo or to ask differently because asking opens us up to learn. You've got my details at the bottom there. You've got a scan to go straight to our website. I'll be delighted to hear from you personally if you want to email me. Absolutely fine with any questions. If you want to apply, like I said, you can quote me and say, Son, you said you can lock in a discount before the 23rd of November. Yes, you can. Um, call it the Thanksgiving discount. We will honor that. But be quick. If you're still yet undecided, you can pay in any fee at any time. You do not have to join us. Log on to our website, register for our webinars. They'll be coming thick and fast in the new year, and especially after October as well. And we hope to meet you, either as students or hopefully our paths will cross. And if you can get over to Galveston, Texas, please hook me up. We'll look me up, sorry, and we will meet you. We'll do a further Q&A, and uh, it'd be nice to put some faces to some names. We've got some more questions on the chat here. Let me just see what it is before we close. Okay. Da, da, da. We're absolutely fine. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening, good day, wherever you are. We're very, very grateful that you attended. And hopefully we'll see some of you even as our value students soon. Thank you. Goodbye. And good blessed.